we're back with more how these NFL teams got their names. The NFC North. First, we got the Vikings. Any guesses? Um, hmm. Well, they discovered America. Maybe that's as far west as they got was like the Minnesota area. So they named them the Vikings. Oh, yeah. They discovered. That. Who dis- didn't we? Who discovered yeah, Le- America? Leif Erickson. Hanga dinga dargan. Yeah, he was, he was a... That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe. Okay. I have founded in 1960 as an expansion team. The team began play the following year. They are named after the Vikings of medieval Scandinavia, reflecting the prominent Scandinavian American culture of Minnesota. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, that was, was my maybe. Like, you might be right. Yes, I only have after. Yeah. Because Canada is technically America. So, I mean, yeah. We'll take it. Okay. Yeah. What's the opposite yeah. of united? Um, divided. Okay. I thought you were going to say, like, Delta or Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Southwest, <laughs> Southwest. <laughs> yeah, Hawaiian Airlines, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so Canada would be like the divided state of America. I like that actually. Yeah, they're not even a real country anyway. Like, rude. No, nah, that was a South Park reference. Anyways, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's try this one. This uh, I want to save that one for last. All right, any guesses on the Packers? Um, I'm going to say in Wisconsin, they have, um, some factories and they pack a lot of stuff there in that state. You're probably right. I think, uh, most states, especially with the rise of Amazon, probably a lot of factories and packing happening. Yeah. But not back when the Packers were founded, which was in 1919, Mm. Curly Lambeau and George Calhoun organized a football team that achieved success against amateur teams in Wisconsin. Lambeau, who worked for the Indian Packing Company, convinced his employer to fund the team's uniforms, giving the team the nickname Packers. With Lambeau as head coach and halfback, the Packers joined the American Professional Football Association, which became the NFL in 1922. In 1921, despite financial difficulties, the team became a public, publicly owned nonprofit corporation, supported by the people of Wisconsin, and remains so today. So I think I got it. Yeah, I think so. Can you read those names again to me? Curly Lambeau. Yeah. And, and George Calhoun. Oh, okay, that was normal. But just that name is like, oh, he's from like the 20s. <laughs> yeah, well, the ni- 1919. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a guy named Curly, come on. Curly, yeah. And Mo. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this one we talked about previously. Do you have any guesses on the Bears? Um, when, when gingivitis was on, I think we talked about it. We did. That was, what, a couple months ago at least. Um, the Bears were... Based off of the Cubs, the guy who founded the Bears was a Cubs fan? No. Damn. Okay. So, in 1920, football franchises cost $100, and players earned an average of $125 per game. I spend that on beer at a football game. Yeah, fun fact. In 1921, after a business downturn, A.E. Staley paid George Hallis five grand to move the team to Chicago and retain the name Staley's for one season. The team shared territorial rights with the Racine Cardinals and Chicago Tigers. Hallis made Ed Dutch Sterneman his partner and head coach. The team played at Cub Park, which was later named Wrigley Field, and was Uh, renamed the Bears because football players were seen as bigger than baseball players. Okay, so I I remember the Cubs correlation, but yeah, gotcha. Okay, okay. That's I mean it's a it's a solid reasoning for it. It's not just like oh, there's bears up here. We'll name yeah. it the bears. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a, another part of it I read was like you you don't see rampant bears running through Chicago. So right, right. And last and certainly least, the lions. Ah, uh, geez, I'm gonna say. When they were founded in 1922, um, that's when MGM also, this, the, the film company, came out, and he really liked that lion roar right at the beginning. of rawr. And he went, ooh, what a fierce animal. I'm going to name my football team that. So do you, what was the year you said? I don't know, 1922? Two. Okay. Sure. 
So a couple things. Uh, do you think there was the technology back then that they could have put that rawr, like on the screen? Oh, that's from like like the forties, isn't it? Yeah. Shit. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Um, no, they they actually like filmed a lion. Like yeah. Its head. Yeah, yeah. But it's later. You're right. You're right. But you're also almost right. Uh, oh. MG, MGM. Well, not about the name, not at all uh, whatsoever. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> but uh, MGM was founded in 1924. So see, Listen. very close. However, uh, the Lions is probably the most ironic of all of the teams that have been named. Okay. In 1934, radio executive George A. Richards purchased the Portsmouth Spartans for eight thousand dollars and relocated the team to Detroit, renaming them the Detroit Lions. Richard chose the name to symbolize the team as the king of the NFL, akin to the lion being the king of the jungle, and to create a connection with the city's baseball team, the Detroit Tigers. Hmm. So named, okay. named to, to symbolize being the king of the NFL, only to 80, almost, yeah, 90 years later, be one of the most disappointing franchises in <laughs> NFL history yeah arguably the most um yeah yeah, yeah. So. sucks to suck there you have it okay yeah